Hey everyone, this is Andrew Tsai. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So today I'm going to show you how to run the game Diablo 4, the Windows version, locally on your Apple Silicon Mac. So if you have an M1 or an M2 chip or a future M3 chip, then this is the tutorial on how to get Diablo 4 running on this computer. This is not being streamed through the internet, through the cloud. It's actually running locally. So this is using something called Game Porting Tool, which is something that Apple released. It's a little bit complicated to use, so I'm going to be guiding you through all of the terminal commands that you're going to need in order to get this to run. And you can see it runs pretty well on my MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip. It also runs nicely on the base M1. So if you have a MacBook Air, you'll be expecting about 20 FPS. So it's certainly playable, especially if you put the FSR and resolution scaling on the ultra performance modes. It's you can go up to about 40 FPS on the base M1. So it is actually possible to get this running on macOS Ventura at the moment. However, I don't necessarily advise it. I would say that it's probably more stable on macOS Sonoma, which at the time of recording is currently in beta. If you want to find out a video tutorial on how to install the macOS Sonoma beta, on a separate volume so it doesn't affect the main data then please make sure to check out the link in the description for a future tutorial video this video is going to be assuming you're using macOS Sonoma so the first thing that we need to do is to download the command line tools for Xcode 15 beta so we're going to visit the developer.apple.com forward slash downloads link which I'll also leave in the description then it's going to prompt to sign into an account but you can actually sign into a standard Apple account and once we're signed in with an account then do a search for command line tools beta click on this more details and then download the command line tools for Xcode 15 beta.dmg click allow and then let this download we're now going to do a search for the word game and then we've got here the game porting toolkit beta so we're also going to click this so once that's finished downloading we're going to double click on the dmg and then we're going to double click and install the command line tools.pkg press continue here agree install type in your password and then let that install so once that's done press close so we're going to go back to our downloads folder and then double click on game porting toolkit beta.dmg here we're going to agree and what that's going to do is to mount a dmg which contains all the files that we need for the next step so what you might want to do is to refer to the readme.rtf this contains all of the original instructions however we'll be using the wiki article instead as it contains a lot of missing steps so i'm going to put the website here on the left and then i'll open up a terminal window here on the right just type in terminal and then return and we're going to place this terminal window here so that it's easy to copy and paste commands between these two windows. So the first thing I want to do is to make sure that we have Rosetta installed. So just control click copy and then paste into here, press return, press A to agree. So you probably have Rosetta installed already, but this just ensures that this is done. Then we're going to go ahead and enter the x86 64-bit shell. So we're going to paste here and this is going to change the prompt. And now we're going to download and install the x86 64-bit version of Homebrew, which is going to be different from your standard Homebrew. Your password will be invisible, but it will register. Just press return. Here we're just going to press it again to confirm. And then it's going to download and install Homebrew. So it's important here to copy these two lines and then paste these two things to set your path correctly. Press return. And now we're going to confirm that our path is correct by typing in which brew. Return. And this is correct. User local bin brew, which corresponds to this user local bin brew. So next what we're going to do is to tap the source code from Apple. Paste it here. Press return. And this is basically making a copy of all the code that we need. So at this stage, you have a couple of options. If you think that your homebrew might be a little bit old for whatever reason, you need to be using the most up-to-date version. Then you should use this command. However, I just installed homebrew for the first time on this computer. So we'll use this command here. Press return. So just be aware that this process really takes quite a long time. When I did it on my MacBook Air, it probably took about an hour and a half. So what we're going to do is just wait for this to complete before we can move on to the next step. So this took quite a bit of time. It says here 26 minutes, but in reality, we're closer to nearly an hour on the M1 Max chip. So now that we've built the necessary files, what we're going to do is to start working on the prefix. So the wine prefix is similar to the crossover bottle concept. And what we're going to do now is basically set the location of the wine prefix. We're going to give it its default name, which Apple has set, which is going to be used in all of the following commands. And we're going to copy this line here and then create a new folder called my game prefix, which is going to go in your home folder. So paste this here, press return. So if everything's gone to plan, this one configuration window will open and then what we need to do is change the windows version from 7 to windows 10 press apply and then OK, and then that will close. Then what we're going to do is to prepare our toolkit. So we still have our game porting toolkit DMG mounted to the computer. What we're going to do is run this command here, which is basically going to copy some library files into the prefixes library files. Press paste here and then return. Next, we're going to use this command to copy three of the scripts from the DMG into the user local bin folder. That's going to allow us to use the script without specifying a path. So we're going to paste this here, press return, and now that's done. 
So now that we've prepared the toolkit, what we're going to do is to go down and scroll down to the battle.net section, and then we're going to create this wine prefix using this command here. So just copy and paste this command, and then paste this into the terminal window. And then this window will pop up here. We want to change our Windows version from Windows 7 to Windows 10, press OK. And because we're going to be running Diablo 4, we're going to be copying and pasting these commands here. So just all of these lines, copy and then paste. And this is a fix because Diablo 4 expects a later version of Windows. And so we're reg editing this so that it detects build 19042. And so we're going to paste this and press return. And now the wine prefix has been set up correctly. Next, what we're going to do is to download the Windows version of Battle.net. So just follow this link here, and then we're going to go ahead and download the Windows version of this software. So here we can see it's the .exe file, which is a Windows file, and that's gone into our Downloads folder. And because it's gone directly into our Downloads folder, we're going to copy this line here, which is going to execute the Battle.net setup .exe into my game prefix. So just go ahead, paste, and then press Return, and then it's going to start the Windows version of Battle.net. What we want to do is just set this up as normal. And here it's saying that we're going to, and here it's saying it's installing in its default location within the prefix, press OK. And then once that's done, we're going to go ahead and log into our account. Just type in your email address and password and press the login button. And then just like that, we are logged in. And it's going to ask us to locate games, but we're going to press close here. Then we want to quit out of this tour. And then we're going to find Diablo 4. So if you've already bought it, then just go to your library, then press the install button and then install it into the default location, press continue, and then install. So anyway, once the download's finished, you can go ahead and launch the game, and the game will launch as normal. So overall, I'm very impressed with the performance of this game, especially because it's running through a translation layer, and it's not really designed to work on a Mac, but we've managed to get it work. It's a direct X12 title, and I think it's fully playable, especially if you have one of the mid-range or higher-end Macs. So just so you're aware, if you want to be able to get back into this game, just be aware that if you try to launch the installed version of Battle.net, it's not going to work. You're going to have to launch the installer again. But thankfully, once you've installed it before, then getting back in is relatively fast. If you want to find out how to make a shortcut directly to Diablo 4, I'm going to be making a tutorial about this in the future, or you can check out the instructions on the Apple Gaming Wiki website. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.